it is quite an impressive and quite extensive list and i mean if there was ever a time where ohio state was gonna you know come out and be the biggest and best team it's this it's this coming year because they have absolutely zero reason not to be because of the quality of players they got in the transfer uh oh geez i was about to say transfer window that's european soccer uh but in the transfer portal um (laughs) uh you know in the transfer portal and you know the amount of players that they retained like players not going to the draft um you know it's man next year for ohio state talent wise they should be the number one team in college football but Derek, um, why don't you kind of start us off and like of the transfers that you've got listed down, who's the first one that you want to talk about? Yeah. So yeah, this just quickly, Ohio state this year, I know it gets said by every fan base and it's an emotional reaction. Um, it's championship or bust. And I, you know me, I don't say that. Like there's maybe two years that I've said that, um, this year being one of them. One being the year we lost to Georgia, that team was a national championship team, without a doubt. But, um, yeah, this year, it, it's quite literally national championship or bust. Like, I tweeted it out. If, you know, if you look at the transfer portal as NFL free agency, it's literally the equivalent of the of Ohio State going in on Madden, turning the salary cap off, and just saying, okay, you're available, sign. You're available, sign. No matter, like, what. Um but quickly before the transfers that came in, a uh, very important factor here. And by the way, if you're an Ohio State fan who watches this video and you say, hey, I want to hear more about this. Well, me and Michael Cozy did a whole hour long podcast talking about more into Ohio State. So that is out, at least hopefully by the time you're watching this. So there's that. There's cheap plug for that. But anyway, um, the guys Ohio State that got to come back, Tristan, is the big thing. Because you got a list here, and I'll read it real fast, full of NFL guys who very well could have went to the draft this year. Uh, Some of them maybe late first round picks, some of them early second rounders uh, who decided to come back. Jack Sawyer, JT Tuimolo out, Ty Leak Williams, Ty Hamilton, Denzel Burke, who could have been probably a top 15 corner. Like, he could have been, you know, really good. Um, He's coming back. Jordan Hancock, Cody Simon, Lathan Ransom, Emeka Abuka, Travion Henderson, and Donovan Jackson. All guys who are NFL players who are coming back for another year at Ohio State uh, at key positions, too. I mean, the entire defensive line, secondary, like everything. So you got to start there. But the transfer portal, and to answer your question, I'll just run over uh, quickly guys who came in. Will Howard, Quinshawn Judkins, Caleb Downs, Seth M- Seth McLaughlin, Julian Sane, and then uh, Will Cardnamek, or however you say his name. Uh, he's a tight end from Ohio University. But it's not a big list of guys, right? Six guys, but it's the quality, not the quantity. It's the quality. So um, Will Howard, Tristan, obviously the quarterback, most important position in the game. So guess we should start there i like will howard a lot i think he has a lot of talent he offers you a lot do i feel great about him i'll be honest not really i think um with will howard it's one of these things where i gotta see it on the field and see how it translates um because the conversations and the comparisons have been made between him and josh allen and i think josh allen is a really talented quarterback and i think will howard is a really talented quarterback um but Howard is like Josh is a guy who has a ridiculously strong arm, could throw it downfield a mile and can also take off with his legs. The question that I have with Will Howard is what is it going to look like, you know, between, between the lines? Like if you're not throwing downfield, what's the accuracy going to look like? What's the, um, you know, velocity at which he throws, is he going to be able to put touch on his, on his passes? Those are the kind of things that I want to see. So that's it, it'll be interesting with will howard it'll be interesting um but to answer your question who is the most important there's two guys one of them is really interesting quinshawn judkins was the best running back in the sec and when me and cozy talked about this we mentioned ironically the browns because 
Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb in their primes, you could constantly rotate those two in, in and out, and you would have fresh legs. You would have longevity. Both of them really didn't get banged up. Um, and you got unbelievable production out of those two when Chubb and Hunt were in their primes, both healthy. Ohio State now has that, but they have a third. Right, You have the best running back, three down back, coming out of the SEC. Go watch Judkins' film. He, he's very impressive. Um, and you know, pair that with Travion Henderson coming back. A guy who, when healthy, is the best running back in college football. So, you know, in terms of stretching that out and kind of the, the longevity and the fresh legs factor, boy, does Ohio State have a run game now. And that's with Dallin Hayden as your third. And Tristan, I love Dallin Hayden to the point where I was not going to be worried if he was the starting running back heading into this year, and he's the third. So that's huge. That's huge. When you have an offense, uh, you know, with Will Howard being included in there that can run the ball with four different guys minimum, that's that's absolutely huge. Um, And then the last guy before I shut up, Caleb Downs. Caleb Downs is an absolute game-changing addition and I say that because Ohio State had a weakness in the safety room so you're replacing a weakness with a huge strength which is massive I mean equivalent would be like what the Browns did last offseason on the defensive line like going from a weakness with the defensive tackles and opposite edge rusher to Zadarius Smith Dalvin Tomlinson like taking that from a weakness to a strength Ohio State did this with Caleb Downs, and Caleb Downs has two years here in Columbus. Two years of control. You could look say it like that. And Tristan, as a freshman, led an Alabama defense in tackles, um, was a playmaker all over the field. For those of you who watched the Alabama Michigan game, the first interception interception that wasn't an interception was Caleb Downs. Like, that, that's who he is. And the kid's only getting better. Like, that's the scary thing. He's only getting better. He returned punts at Alabama as well, took one to the house. Like, yeah, I mean, Ohio State, the, the difference from going from after the Missouri Bowl game in the Cotton Bowl to where we are now is quite literally night and day. Literally night and day. And it's because Ohio State's NIL was – terrible it was awful and because of everything that happened because of losing to Michigan and kind of this new world they were forced to go all in they were forced to figure this out and they have and they're putting their money where their mouth is and it at least on paper has paid off because you got guys coming back and you brought in guys at key positions so um you know with that being said it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But Tristan, what do you uh, what do you think about all these additions and everything that's going on here at Ohio State? Yeah, um, it's it's crazy. So obviously, you know me. I'm not the biggest college football guy, um, but I'm starting to get a little bit more involved with it. Um, starting to pay a little bit more attention, especially Ohio State, because. You know, my friends, also you, like, you Mm -hmm. know, Ohio State fans and stuff like that. So I'm starting to get more into college football. Um, Just it's never been something I've been too big into. And, you know, from looking up the individual players that that transferred into Ohio State, uh, you know, for a program like Ohio State, right, you're always going to have – a great recruiting class and you're going to be able to get great recruits but with the transfer portal now as it is a lot of your recruits that you get in you know they'll come in and they'll see where they are on the depth chart and instantaneous gone right Mm -hmm. and so it puts a bigger emphasis on the transfer portal and in this new era of the transfer portal I feel like Ohio State, what they were able to do in the transfer portal this year was absolutely fantastic. Especially when you consider the fact that, you know, if we look at last season, right, Kyle McCord was obviously 
not that guy. Um, oh shit! <laughs> but it, sorry. <laughs> no, you're you're good. <laughs> um, but Kyle McCord was obviously just not that guy. The guy that was going to um, take Ohio State to the next level. He, he just it wasn't him. And I feel like Ohio State learned their lesson from from last last season because quite literally, I mean, if you have a Will Howard in the backfield, odds are, excuse me, odds are you beat Michigan and you get into the college football playoff as the number one seed, right? And, I mean, I think Ohio State could have beaten Bama this year if with a good quarterback, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that Ohio State could have beat Washington. And that's where the level of competition is right now in the Big Ten between Ohio State and Michigan is because Ohio State's excellence for so long has forced Michigan to have to quite literally become the best team in college football or they will not be able to beat Ohio State. That's By where it's gone By any means to. possible to the point, yeah. not to bring it up and open up a can of worms, <laughs> but to the point where over the last <laughs> few years since like 2018, they were compiling <laughs> shit and cheating to get to that point. But you know what? I ain't going to talk about it. I ain't going to talk about how they cheated to get there and how they got handed the game in the national chair. I ain't going to talk about it because guess what? You know what? Never mind. Just, just, yeah. No, Continue. no. You're, <laughs> it's funny for me. Uh, but, you know. It's, but it's driven Michigan to the point where they've had to be the number one mm-hmm. team in college football. That's what it's come to. Um, and you look at where they're going to be at this year. I mean, my money's on Harbaugh's gone. I, I really think that he's probably going to go to L.A. Um, you know, I, I really feel like the Chargers is, is enticing for him. Um, and, I mean with the investigation that's going on and stuff like that, he might want to just leave. And, you know, it's, it's so crazy because it's like, you know, they'll be losing their head coach. They'll be losing their starting quarterback who I know you're not high on at all, but for a college quarterback, he's been good. He's been pretty good. Um, I think we can both agree to that. Um, And, you know, it's just they're they're going through such a massive change. And for Ohio State to not only be able to retain their talent from going to the draft, but also to get in that extra talent in the transfer portal. This next season for Ohio State could be, and sh- I'd argue should be, an amazing one. Especially when you factor that Alabama is not going to have Nick Saban. That really, really incentivizes Ohio State to become the number one team in college football. And I think they've made a lot of right steps to get there. Um, Mm -hmm. And similarly, uh, you know, as far as the individual players themselves, you know, Downs, you said it, he's absolutely a game-changing safety who is going to provide some excellent, excellent quality safety play. And when you're talking about the Big Ten and some of the opponents that Ohio State's going to play next year, you know, I think he's going to be very necessary and he's going to play a big part in that defense. Uh, Judkins, you mentioned him. You know, the fact that you now, I would say it's probably certain because Blake Quorum's not coming back next year for Michigan, right? So neither is Donovan Edwards. So. I mean, you really double down over top of, of, of Michigan. You've now got two backs in who are better than any back that they've got right now, at least that, that we've seen on film. I'll say mm-hmm. that. You know, it's possible that they have a superstar they're developing. Who knows? But regardless, you know, it's just – and then, of course, Will Howard, who, like you said, boatloads of potential. We'll see what he can be in this Ohio State system. I tend to think it's going to work. Because with college football, like you said, the accuracy would be a concern. How you read the plays, what, how you progress through your reads, that's a concern. Like, we got to see it to believe it. But in college football, elite athletes get away with stuff. And that's what Will Howard is. He's an elite mm-hmm. athlete. He's got the arm strength. He's got the mobility. And if I was Will Howard... I'm looking at Ohio State right now, and I'm saying, Damn. right, 
So, obviously, Marvin Harrison's gone, right? That's a blow. But there are still quality receivers there. It's practically wide receiver you, <laughs> you know? Um, and now you've got two elite backs coming into the mix. And that defense last year was great, and you added downs on top of it. Mm-hmm. And not many players declared for the draft. Was it just Harrison? Like, I, I did not see. No. Well, can you many. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. My my little uh, box that the mic plugs into fell. So <laughs> I didn't know what happened. But um, so the guys that are going to the draft, Tommy Eichenberg, Cade Stover, Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, I did see Stover. That's right. Okay. I Yeah. I mean, that what? might be it off the top of my head. Mike Hall. He's a huge one, but still. Mm-hmm. But, but, but yeah. yeah, I mean, you've got um, compared to what it could have been for exits to the draft. No, you yeah. really. I mean, I cannot say this enough. And as somebody who's going to be paying a lot more attention to Ohio State next year, I expect them to be extremely good. And here's the final thing I will say about this. Right? Is you know, we'll talk about this as well when we get to the Browns with Deshaun Watson, but it's the same exact thing that's happening right now for Ohio State with Ryan Day. Mm -hmm. This is your make it or break it. Like, we're either going to find out that you're a guy or we're going to find out that we need to move on. That's what this next season's all about. And, you know, outside of one team, if we're being completely open here outside of one team, he's been great, but it's inexcusable to not win against that one team. That's the problem. So, you know what? This whole year, it's got to be beat Michigan. Beat Michigan. That's what the message has got to be the whole year. And if you can do that, I think that you can win a national championship as well. So it we'll see. It's going to be an interesting college football year, that's for sure. Yeah, and so a couple of things. Um, on the Michigan side of thing, sorry, people at home, they're fucked. Like they they're absolutely fucked. There's nothing they can do about it because they. So I I know I've seen a lot of Michigan like boards and stuff like Reddit threads or whatever. They're starting to freak out, being like, "Oh man, I was you know, dude, let me tell you something." Michigan will be lucky not to have at least three losses next year. Like, and I know that sounds crazy because like in the college fo- or in the NFL world, three losses. Wow. That's a great season. <laughs> like, but in college football, like one loss is big. Two losses is game like ending. Um, Michigan has a tough schedule next year. They got Oregon. They got USC. They have Wa- Texas. I think maybe they have Washington. Um, I say they've got Washington too. I'm yeah. Sure. And obviously, you know, all these schools are changing. But when you look at who the big boys are going to be next year, it's Ohio State, Georgia, and then everybody else. Well, actually, I re- honestly, if you want my genuine opinion, I think it's Ohio State. And I'm not saying that as a fan. I'm just saying on paper right now, it's Ohio State. And then it's Georgia, and then it's everybody else. Now, who is everybody else? Texas is going to be good. Oregon's going to be good. They just got uh, Dylan Gabriel. Um, you know, and there's going to be a couple other schools, right? Every some somewhere, some somehow. There's going. I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say there's going to be a school that pops up. There always is. So, um, on that side of things, Ohio State. They're going to make the playoffs. Like, that's a given. It's 12 teams. And here's the interesting thing. Tristan, I don't know if you're if you're ready for this. This is kind of crazy news. When the BCS era started, who won the first BCS? That was Ohio State. When the college football four-team playoff started, who was the first ones to win that? That was Ohio State. Guess what's happening this year? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new playoff system and ohio it's, state has won every single one of them it's like the team of destiny yeah <laughs> no for real like it sounds crazy to say that but cozy told me that and i was like oh shit you're right like it, it's it's crazy so i mean everything is pointing that way um 
And Michigan is absolutely screwed. Like, I, I don't say that as an Ohio State fan. I say that as just a football fan. They're screwed. They're going to get hammered by the NCAA. Um, they're losing everybody. You know, they're going to have a new coach. They're going to have a new – every key position, running back, quarterback, receiver. Uh, defensively, they're losing some key guys. Like, they are they are losing as much – if not more, key pieces as Ohio State was supposed to. So there's that. And then there's the fact of everything they're going to get from the NCAA. And on the Ohio State side of things, and by the way, that game, like the world will get right. Again, the world will be in a better place again on that day because I'm telling you right now, it's January 22nd at 8.32 p.m. I'm telling you this right now. Ohio State will absolutely dog fucking walk Michigan. And it won't be close. Like, it will not even be a game. It won't be competitive. That is how bad that game's going to be. It's in Columbus. This is the best Ohio State team I'll probably see in my life, uh, at least up till now, other than maybe like 2015. Like, that team was stacked. This team should be up there. Like, that th- that game's not going to be close. I'm not even worried about it, to be honest with you. Um... And another thing I wanted to mention before I shut up with Caleb Downs, the reason why he's so important is because the nature of this Ohio State defense and how they're set up, you're going to have Lathan Ransom and Caleb Downs as your two safeties. Sonny Styles, who is a freak, he's like uh, he's like Ohio State's Isaiah Simmons. If you remember Isaiah Simmons at Clemson. Oh yeah, yeah. He's going to be moved from strong safety into linebacker, but. He's going to be, he's a hybrid guy, so he can play wherever you want him. Now, Caleb Downs is your ultimate hybrid guy. Like, literally at Alabama, they had him strong safety, free safety, like nickel corner, um, just everywhere. Sub linebacker? Um, Yeah, yeah. So, So, he can literally be used everywhere. Literally everywhere. So, you now have two guys on that, and actually there's more. But really, two elite freak athletes on the same defense now with Sonny Styles and Caleb Downs, where they can do whatever. Like it's, it's not. It's it's literally not fair. Like I'm sitting here as an Ohio State fan, being like, it, this team ain't fair. Like I fully admit, everybody who gets just stomped by us, I'm sorry. I feel bad. It's not fair. <laughs> um. Now, with that being said, you know, it's you still got to go play the games, and we'll find out. Like, maybe something happens. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this team, it's crazy. Like, I genuinely feel bad because this is not college football. Like, this ain't college football. This shouldn't happen. Um, but it did, and we're the beneficiary of it. So, I'll take it, but <laughs> it is what it is. Anyway. Yeah, and not only that, but, like, the, the coaching changes at Washington and at Alabama. You know, yeah. Just mm. everything that's going on right now in college football, th- this next year, and the 12-team playoff, like like you suggested, uh, with the, uh, oh, geez, with uh, USC, UCLA, uh, and then Oregon, Washington. Oregon, Washington. All yep. come into the Big Ten, too. Like it's weird. Oh my gosh. This this next season could be the craziest, most entertaining season of college football that we could ever see. It it's gonna be exciting and it's gonna be interesting. Um as somebody who has not been into college football before and somebody who the college football playoff has helped kind of reel me in a little bit more, um this is really exciting what what they're doing the 12 team playoff and um you know just just the chaos that's happening um i'm, I'm really excited